everyone, it is Christine here and I'm excited. I'm sharing the first of the squares that I am creating as part of a great little initiative kicked off by Annie Claxton. Arty Farty Annie, you might know her on YouTube. She also has a wonderful Discord community and a Facebook community as well. And she started this great initiative called the Great Big Little Stitchery Swap. And so it's got the hashtag Stitchery Swap, which I'll um, be posting in the title and the description. And the idea behind it is that we create a 10 centimeter by, by 10 centimeter square or a four inch by four inch square. And we swap it with someone somewhere else in the world. So we're lining up our own swaps. Um, and I have ended up with a rather large number of people to swap um, squares with, which you might be able to tell by my pile of squares. And I don't think I've even cut all the squares yet. But I wanted to pop on and do a video as I am creating the squares. I'm not going to post these videos until the people have received their squares because I want them to have the first um, unveiling of the square. I don't want them to see it on YouTube and then get it in the mail. So I'll wait till they tell me they've received them and then I'll post um, these videos. Some of the people are YouTubers as well, so they may well um, share a video of their um, unwrapping of their square and um, looking at it. So the square I'm doing tonight is for Annie herself. I thought I should start with her. I've put a number one there. She's based in the UK, so I'll need to get in the mail and traveling on its way to her, given mail from Australia does take longer overseas. And for each of the people, um, I've either um, harvested ideas about them just from what I know through conversations we've had and conversations um, I've been part of, or I've also asked some people where I had less of a sense about their sort of broader hobbies or their absolute sort of preferred um, colours. But for Annie, I feel like we really know each other and we've become really, really good um, stitchy and creative mates. Um, so some of my ideas for the piece I'm going to create for Annie, she's been talking about her desire for pink hair. So I think she put a, a dye through recently, but it wasn't as vibrant pink. So I want to give her a super vibrant pink hair in the piece I'm going to create. This is um, about granting wishes for her. And I love fun things. I love when people do fun things with their, yeah, their hair or their expression. So I think that would be super. Um, she's one of those people that just has so much color, color and creates colorful, um, pieces when she creates creates pieces of art. Um, she often includes, I've seen her include rainbows um, in quite a few things. So I thought rainbows are a nice one to include. She doesn't mind a bit of bling. Um, she loves working and crafting and sewing. Um, she's taking part in the A to Z of stitches or our little dictionary of um, stitches that we're creating. I believe her favourite seasons are spring and autumn. Um, she likes reading and Lord of the Rings um, was one of or is one of her favourite books. Um, as I mentioned, she loves art. Um, she often features her glasses in her sort of yeah artwork or her um, little sort of logo, etc. And community is really important to her like it is to me. So that's something we've got as a really strong shared passion. And Discord is one of the, the communities that she hosts. So there's some of the inspirations. Now I've narrowed down and culled down to the pieces that I'm going to use um, for Annie. Um, I started with a massive pile, so that just wouldn't have, that wouldn't have worked. I would have been just here going, oh, I like that one, I like that one. So I've done some culling, and I think what we'll do um, first up is we'll just put together and lay out her piece. Um, I'll show you all the elements, explain the thinking behind them, um, and then I'll go away and stitch down the elements, and then we can always come back and do some of the further embellishment um, of the elements together. I've already started some of the embellishment, um, which I'll show to you as well. Um, and I'll show you some of the different um, materials I'm using and the techniques even for how I've actually got my, my square cut out. So I'll just put aside um, this little Annie collection of goodies. So these are the squares that I have cut out. Um, I started with one square that I measured out with the 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters and then with a border around it that is a bit more than it, we were told a centimeter, but I wanted to give a bit more. And what I've used is actually the width of this um, metal ruler because it has a nice right angle so I can actually get really good um, accurate and precise measurements. So I just go around and measure to get that inner, inner square of 10 centimeters by 
10 centimeters and then I keep this one as my um, template and in fact I'm actually going to write a T on it so I do remember that that's my that's my template because what it then means is when I'm cutting out other um, outer squares I always use this one because if I kept cutting and then using the next one as my template they would gradually get bigger and bigger so that's a little that's a little tip that's my friction marker which um, erases when heat's applied so I've already cut out um, quite a decent pile of these um, as I think I mentioned, I've got quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of swappies, um, and so the the one on the bottom here is the one that we're going to be using for Annie. It's got already um, a nice little edging piece on it, but the other edges are, are raw edges. But this fabric's pretty good. It's an old, beautiful um, vintage bedspread that I've used some of it for the backing for my Roxy Journal of Stitchery down the garden path. Um, but it's just got this most lovely embossed woven in um, flower design. So I thought it'd be lovely, particularly if people end up having a border around their pieces. Um, they've got something really nice. And even on the back, if for some reason the back's um, visible when they stitch it together. Um, yeah, it's a really nice, nice backing. So I've got my 10 centimetre by 10 centimetre square to work in. And it's not a big space. That's why I had to really, really cull things down. Um, so... I'll bring my pieces over, move it down a bit, move that, um, actually I'll push my threads up, I'll put, put that there, put that there, that will be a good way to go. So I want to use this rainbow piece, so yeah, colours was always going to be a feature, this wasn't going to be a muted, a muted piece, this was going to be a colourful, colourful piece. And I love when I get a piece of fabric that has a um, interesting selvage on it with the so they do this to test the test and show the colors of um, the different elements in the design. So I like to keep those on when I'm doing little slow stitching projects. They add add a lovely bit of interest. Now this one um, was from a lovely piece of fabric I had that had a little um, Paris design on it. but I saw this little lady and it reminded me of a recent um, piece. Annie had created as part of the Inspired by collaboration. She had this um, little wire mannequin that she'd got from a thrift store and then she created this amazing um, character of herself um, from that. Um, so, the, yeah, that little sort of thing just reminded me of that. And then the pink hair, I just had to add um, some stitched pink, vibrant pink hair. So I went with my most... Um, vibrant pink. I was originally going to use my variegated but that's a bit too thick so I just used a single strand to just add lots of lovely very stylish stylish hair. I made sure it had a really nice part and that those lovely little wispy bits lots of body um, so yeah I think that's a lovely representation of Annie with gorgeous gorgeous pink hair. So I'm going to put that over on the other side I'm going to cheat a little bit and just have my wispy little um, fringy edgy bits um, poking out. If they really needed to, they could um, cut those fringy edgy bits off. Um, but I think it's nice. I like in my pieces to have those, those more edgy pieces. Now, I have to include, and I'm planning to do this for everyone, um, one of my beautiful little hexagon flowers that I make using some of my precious small little samples of vintage fabrics. Um, so there's some really lovely ones. This is just such a fine um, cotton. I actually got it from the reverse art truck, but it feels like a um, Liberty fabric. I don't know if it, I mean, it could possibly be Liberty samples. I haven't actually searched to see if it comes up in the, um, yeah, the Liberty catalog. Um, and then I use my little Epiflex um, hexagon templates, which are reusable plastic um, templates. You can even apparently wash them in the, um, the dishwasher or washing machine. Don't know. But I actually just use them over and over again and don't need to actually um, wash them. You would be washing them um, yeah, if, you, if the glue was a problem. I actually just use Yoohoo glue on them um, and fold the um, fabric over. And then I find I just loosen it around with a um, sort of tapestry needle at the end and they just pop out um, beautifully and then can use them again. Don't even have to have to wash them. So I've got a video on doing that, but I'll probably include another one um, along the way here where I'll share the technique for using these smaller 
Epiflex templates, which are just, yeah, fantastic. Love them. So I'm thinking I'll put my um, flower down here. And so I selected colours that were part of the design. So the blues, pinks, greens, and yellows, and yeah, purple. <laughs> It's great, I've got all the colours, but that's the idea. It's meant to be meant to be colourful. Um, and then I've got this little edging piece, which I'd had cut out for my Down the Garden Path, but it was additional to what I needed for that, so that will be nice to include in the top. Um, I've got this little um, embroidery cut out, because I do like including these in my work, but I'm just trying to work out where I can where I can put it. So we might have a think. It either go down here or down here, like it's sort of growing, growing out the front. Or if I want to be really whimsical and fun, I could have it, have it popping out of um, Annie's hair, like a flower, like an idea sprouting out. I do kind of like that because it merges up in with the the tree. So that might be a that might be a go. I could then have my little hexagon sort of butting up against it and then I've got these little elements now what these are are going to be little um, bunting because Annie shared a video recently where she'd had her um, yeah lovely bunting that had been hanging outside and then she was bringing it inside because it was starting to yeah lose a bit of its color but I thought oh bunting's a nice nice idea and I had a really fun little idea for how I could send a special message to my um, recipients and make the bunting essentially a celebration of our common shared things and my sort of the things that I admire about the person that I am um, sending this to. So what I've done with the bunting is created them as little pockets. So I've um, folded over fabric so I've got no raw edges um, and then I've stitched um, down to create a little pocket that will be on the back of it and when it gets um, flipped up you'll be able to remove a piece of paper from the pocket and on the paper I'm going to write some of the things that we have in common that then relate to what I've put on the bunting as a decoration so I'll do that in um, these two and then the third one um, I'll be using my lovely French laundry labels now these are direct from France um, and I'm lucky to have the initials for my name. So it's a way that I can kind of sign the work without signing the work. And then I've got a lot of um, other ones that are spell out words. So I intentionally have been collecting ones that spell out um, words. And so I've got love because I do love to put a bit of love into my work, send a bit of love out into the world. Um, so yeah, they're just beautiful things. Even the boxes are lovely um, and it's just... Yeah, a roll of, or usually two rolls actually. And sometimes they will have aging marks. So some of my um, CO ones, um, yeah, definitely at the start of the roll have some aging marks on it. Um, I think the rest of the roll is pretty good, but that just all adds to the charm as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes they'll have their little original pins stuck into them, which will have added some added some rust into the into the mix. So that is them and so I've used those to stitch onto this one um, love CO so love with my initials of my name and this is again a lovely gorgeous for, um, floral fabric and so in this one I'm planning to write the things that I admire about the person I'm sending it to I'm planning to have those strung like bunting and then I think if it won't make the envelope too thick, um, I'll then have this sort of, yeah, hanging above them across the top. So I just think that's going to look so very um, fun. This will have to go behind, obviously. So I might even have to bring my hexagon down a smidge. Um, but yeah, I just think that's going to be really really lovely and then um, yeah when they want to see what the little note is they can just tip it up and pull the little note out so I'll only be attaching those at the at the top so that is the plan I will go off um, stitch it down 
um, and then I'll come back and um, we can either do a bit of stitching together or I will show you the finished finished product oh and I have to put one of my beautiful um, little mother of pearl um, antique buttons that I've got because they're so so special um, and I just adore them um, so for the threads I'm thinking I will try and use some of my lovely variegated wonderful threads because they are super super fun um, even the green one possibly even though it's a different green I think it's nice to kind of use that use that contrast but first of all I'll just stitch the background pieces down um, with some regular just cotton um, to just get them in place so I don't have to have pins and then I can start to stitch down all the elements so I hope you enjoyed that little glimpse stay tuned because by the time in the merest of moments I will be back um, with a stitch down piece so see you soon Hello everyone, it's been the merest of moments for you, but it's been about a day and a half for me, I think. So I have been busily stitching away on this and I decided to just come back and show you the finished um, product rather than making you watch um, the stitching because it's kind of hard when it's on such a small scale to have it all sort of visible within camera. Um, and I've been evolving the piece as I go. So let me give you a full update on it. So I took as my inspiration, as I had shared, um, all the different things that I had learnt about Annie um, and what she loves and where we have some shared passions. Um, and then I've added some in subsequent days as well, which I have also incorporated in the piece. So I'll come back to those in a moment. So let's start off with the bunting. And so the bunting is all about celebrating Annie's and my friendship. So it's a friendship bunt bunting and a passion, shared passion bunting. So we've got our little um, stitch and we've got our stitch book, which represents the um, dictionary of stitches um, or the fabric dictionary of stitches that we're, we're working on with Annie um, supporting me and our little community in that project, which is absolutely fabulous. Then we've got our little rainbow, but also celebrating buttons um, and also celebrating community. And then we've got my little um, French laundry labels. Um, spelling out love and then the initials of my name. Um, for the bunting, I've used this, which is like a, a wool, I guess it's sold in wool sections. Um, and as you can see, um, they're actually little longer shapes. But what I found is if you tie them, tie the string either side of them, they come out to the shape of a little pom-pom. So I did that because that was the perfect spacing for my little bits of bunting. Now I've just stitched um, the pom-poms down at either end. So the bunting um, actually flips over and up. So you can enjoy the full picture underneath when the bunting is flipped like that. So let's just take a quick look at what I have put in each of the pieces of bunting. So the first one, celebrating our shared passion for slow stitch, experimenting with crafts and arts and drooling over gorgeous fabric and sewing supplies. So that's that little one. Then the next one is we have a shared passion for rainbows, celebrating diversity and seeing the best in others and buttons. <laughs> and then the third one. is all the things that I admire in Annie, um, or a small list of them actually. I so admire your energy, passion, kindness, warmth, enthusiasm, joy, encouragement, inspiration, fun, and sense of community. So that's the bunting. So then let's move on um, to the rest of the piece. So I've got this lovely little um, piece of um, a fabric scrap, um, which I'd actually used some of this in my Roxy Journal of Stitchery. So I've just done some stitching over of the vine component. I've left the little rosebuds and little um, smaller roses because I just wanted those left from the fabric. I think they're quite sweet. Um, I've then used a stitch, um, the German knotted blanket stitch, which I recently previewed in one of my fabric um, dictionary of stitches so where we're doing learning and practicing a new stitch each day um, and it looks like little people and then I've just put a little French knot on the top so it actually looks even more like a little person let me bring that up so it's like little people holding hands in a big row so for me um, that symbolizes the sense of community that's um, really important to Annie and that she really nurtures but is also really important to me as well then I've got all the bright colours, which you can see it's a very bright piece, probably one of the brighter um, little slow stitch tree pieces I've actually done, and it was just such, such fun. Then we've got my completed um, and stitched down little hexi with these tiny little um, hexagons. Um, that piece of fabric that I've used down here has the selvage edge on it. 
I incorporated two bits of my gorgeous Nana's um, vintage rickrack. So uh, my Nana has passed a number of years ago now, but I just treasure the little sewing supplies I've got from her. Then we've got our little Annie Claxton down here with the pink hair that she has um, always wanted or wanted um, wants at the moment. So I've given her pink hair. I've given her a crown as well because I reckon she deserves to be crowned for all the amazing things that she does. And then I've um, embellished the dress, which originally just had some green and yellow on it um, with these little um, sort of lacework pieces. I've done green French knots with variegated yarn. I've done little um, sunflower print to her dress because she happened to mention in one of her recent videos where, where she was showing the amazing stitchery that um, Snoppy um, or Karen had done for her, um, that she loves sunflowers and they hold a special place for her because they were at the cottage um, and they were there when, when she was married. Um, so I've incorporated sunflowers, in fact, throughout the design after she mentioned that, and I turned this um, tree into a tree of um, sunflowers. So there's little sunflowers and then there's bigger ones. And then I added a sunflower with a brown bead um, to the center of the hexi and there's a brown bead over here as well. So they're just my little references um, to bling. Um, so that's the sunflowers. And then I've created it as a mini world because Annie loves to build these incredibly detailed little mini mini worlds so I felt that I could place her within a mini mini world and that would be something that was meaningful to her um, as I've mentioned she loves rainbows so I've got that incorporated in one of the bits of the bunting and we've got her her love of her sewing and crafting and arting and her craft room so that's captured that's captured in that bit of bunting um, and then spring and autumn is really um, the inspiration for the whole piece and I've used vintage pieces of um, stitchery which I've incorporated up here and down here and then also just merged them into the existing pattern of the fabric which I have stitched over all of the branches all of the leaves I've done the leaves um, with detached lazy daisies and then filled them in and then I've done bullion knot leaves here with just a stripe um, down the middle so they worked out really really great I haven't actually done leaves that way before um, and then I use my gorgeous Razzle Dazzle thread to do a lot of the larger um, sunflowers because I like that it kind of captures, you get that variation um, on sunflowers when they sort of catch the light on their, their petals. So I just love the effect and it's just super glistening and it feels lovely to the touch. Um, and then had to have one of my gorgeous mother of pearl um, antique buttons in here. So I picked out one that was extra luminous and I've made it as a little handbag for the lovely Annie to be um, carrying because she wouldn't be wouldn't be out without a button by her side. I've got a little chain stitch stem going up there and I've just done this lovely stitching um, to integrate the um, these this piece up here where it's actually sort of like visible with yellow and green and it's something that Melanie um, who's purveyor of reclaimed textiles but she also has a her own textile art um, site on Instagram and it's a style that she often does when she's integrating vintage pieces in which I really really admire and it was really fun um, trialing that here. So I feel like there is so much stitchery on this. Um, you can see a lot of it when you look to the back and there's also some stitches you probably can't even see which are done with a very pale um, off-white as well as um, white stitching. So it's it's heavily stitched. Um, I do love leaving the backs because to me they are absolutely fascinating to look at and I think Annie feels the same way and I know that's part of, part of this project to, to leave the backs on. So that is um, the piece. I hope you are enjoying seeing that. Um, and yeah, the fabrics in the hexi, they're all vintage, um, just little precious, precious pieces. So I want to share those. And then I've got a card um, for Annie as well. So I won't, I'll leave that, leave the card um, for Annie um, to enjoy herself. But I've included a poem that's a really lovely one that came up recently in a Fleur Woods email that she sent out. And it's all about doing the joyous things. So I'm planning to include that, I think, with all of my um, swaps because I just think it's got some really lovely messages in it. And so this will all be going in this um, Australian um, native card that I've made with my own um, a printout of my silk 
um, fabric, which I did flower pounding on. So I just love the little little pansies and other colours. I wanted to actually send some of my silk fabric, but I'm worried that it will be, get picked up at customs as being as having plant matter in it. So I just didn't want this to get delayed or not get to its destination. So I'm not going to not going to send it. Um, so I'll just be putting a piece of paper on either side and then sticking this in the card and then putting the card in this square envelope. Um, and that's able to be sent from Australia with Australia Post for $3 to anywhere in the world as long as it's kept below um, 50 grams and as long as it's less than five millimetres thick. So Aussie girls, um, if you're yet to send yours, um, make sure you, you check that out. Um, I'll include probably a communi community post just to get that information out um, before this video shows because I'll only be showing this video once Annie has um, received her package. So I've just had an absolute ball doing this. Um, it's just been so lovely to create something really, really special that celebrates our friendship. And I'm so looking forward to creating um, my next ones too. So um, be patient, folks, because I do have over 20 um, people to create um, stitchery squares for, but I'm going to just yeah, keep working on them every evening um, and I'll gradually work my way through. But I don't want to rush. I want to keep each one um, yeah, really special and put as much, as much stitching um, as makes sense to put on it um, rather than just doing a, a quick and quick and dirty job. I want to make them really special, really special keepsakes. But I'm just yeah, really thrilled with how this turned out and evolved. And I always, always find as I stitch that I find um, additional things that I want to include in it. Hopefully I haven't been talking too fast. I think I'm a bit overexcited again. But anyway, um, I'll get this into the mail this afternoon and it can start to make its way to Annie. It's going to be fascinating to see how long it takes. So thanks everyone so much for watching and I will speak to you soon. Bye.